So I want to, uh, to, to let you know that uh, based on the uh, uh, recommendation of our public health officer and our director of public health, uh, and after uh, consultation with the city manager, uh, I've gone ahead and uh, uh, declared a, a local disaster uh, in, uh, in the city, and associated with that uh, have issued an order uh, that effectively cancels uh, South by Southwest uh, for this year. Uh, the uh, county judge has done a, a companion uh, effort. Uh, we'll give her a chance to, to let you know that, and then we're going to hear from the uh, medical uh, professionals uh, upon whose uh, advice uh, we rely, together with the, uh, the independent advisory panel uh, that they brought together. Uh, and then at the end of their comments, uh, the judge and I will conclude and we'll ask for questions. Judge. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, as the Chief Executive of Travis County, I am uh, signing a companion declaration of disaster, which will apply countywide to uh, festival gatherings uh, that are attracting um, individuals from areas that have documented cases of person-to-person -person transmission of COVID-19, and also those participants would be expected to be in close and sustained proximity with one another. So clearly, South by Southwest would fall under that criteria. But we will, uh, uh, this is a, a, um, a medical and data-driven decision. And so uh, next, I, I think it prudent to hear from Dr. Escott with regard to what goes into this decision uh, so that we'll also know how it will apply moving forward. The Travis County Declaration uh, lasts for seven days and, of course, with the option of renewal as long as we see um, circumstances um, requiring our heightened preparation. Thank you, Mayor Adler and Judge Eckhart. I want to thank you for your leadership in taking this proactive step to help this community prepare for this storm. I want to start off by saying that we have no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Travis County. Having said that, the COVID-19 threat is growing across the United States. And that threat is growing locally because of what's happening in the rest of the United States and across the world. But now is not the time to panic. Now is the time to prepare and to provide a measured response to that threat. This is not unlike a hurricane looming in the Gulf. We know that the hurricane is advancing closer. We can see the storm clouds starting. But it is not clear yet how strong or how impactful that storm will be. But now is the time to prepare. Now is the, ti the time to think about what are we gonna do as a community and as a government when that storm comes. I want to address the decision regarding South by Southwest. This is an effort to carefully consider and weigh the risk of introducing a spread of COVID-19 as well as the mitigation strategies. Sorry, Sorry about that. that's all right. Of, of canceling the event. All right, we have to weigh what's the impact of the potential threat, uh, threat of spread and what's the impact of the de decision we make to cancel the event because that can certainly have health consequences. What we know is there's a lack of conclusive scientific evidence that canceling mass gatherings will change the overall impact and spread of disease over time. However, there is evidence that it may accelerate the spread and it may, ha may make that uh, happen sooner. This lack of conclusive evidence is clear from the CDC and the DSHS response, which has been to defer to local government. So when we don't have scientific evidence to inform us what the best decision is, we look for best practice. And when we don't have best practice, we look to expert opinion. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, as you know, I formed an expert advisory panel with experts and leaders in medicine from across our city and county. We looked at the options for mitigation. We looked at 
are there opportunities to decrease the threat to an acceptable level that would allow us con to continue? However, after careful deliberation, there was no acceptable path forward that would mitigate the risk enough to protect our community. That risk assessment was based upon several risk factors associated with South by Southwest in particular. Some of those are the size and magnitude of the event. Some of those were the nature of the venue and what's happening at those venues. When we have events where it's close personal person contact, like concerts and those sorts of festival type of settings, we expect people are going to be together for an extended period of time, which increases that threat. Also of concern was the fact that there were multiple registered guests from international locations and domestic locations with evidence of person-to-person -person spread. That combined with the fact that this is a high impact disease and that we lack a vaccine or treatment at this stage makes the threat higher as well. I want to be clear, this does not mean we need to cancel all mass gatherings. It does mean that we need to take a more careful look going forward in how to mitigate that threat. So in response to the declaration by the mayor and the judge, over the coming days, I'll issue a series of public health orders that will serve to enhance our community preparation and enhance the protection of the most vulnerable members of our community, namely our individuals over the age of 65 and those with pre-existing health conditions. Our advice to the public right now stands the same. Avoid shaking hands, use a fist bump, use an elbow bump, use a bow, whatever it is, because we know that one of the primary methods of spread is that handshake and then touching the eyes, the mouth, or the nose. Again, wash those hands frequently, use hand sanitizer if you don't have uh, availability of soap and water, don't touch your face with unwashed hands, if you cough or sneeze, do so into a bent elbow into a sleeve so that you avoid getting that on your hands and touching other things. <coughs> I can't emphasize this one strongly enough. If you are sick, if you have a fever, if you have a cough, you should not be going to public places. This includes school. This includes work. This includes church. We have to protect the community. And we are powerful in protecting the community if we heed these warnings and this advice. You should not ch send your children to school or daycare if they're sick. And if your plan for taking care of that child is a parent or a grandparent, you need to identify another plan. Because again, those individuals over the age of 65 or those with other health conditions are the most vulnerable and we need to protect them. Now is the time for our churches, our schools, our businesses, and our entire community to prepare for this storm. I'm gonna turn it over to Stephanie Hayden now who's gonna give some more details about special events. Good afternoon, I'm Stephanie Hayden, Director of Austin Public Health. Um, since this situation is rapidly evolving this will help us to be able to mitigate the spread of disease by requesting that for all events, we implement a disease mitigation plan. The department will be working with the Austin Center for Events as well as other partners in the city to ensure all events have a disease mitigation plan. Some of the things that we are going to be looking at as far as the criteria would be crowd density, whether it's going to be an indoor or outdoor event, the layout of the, vent, of the vendor of the venue, whether the event is a registered or a non-registered event, the number of participants that may be coming from areas that are affected by the COVID-19 outbreak within the last 14 days of that event. So if they are coming internationally or from within the U.S. We are also going to look at the age of the participants and the type and purpose of the event. All of these are things that we are going to move forward as we review all of the events that are happening in the city. 
And because there, is, there are dynamics with COVID-19, we will evaluate each event case by case. Thank you. So to wrap up, I just want to reiterate that panic is going, will weaken us. This is not a panic-based decision. This is a decision based on expert medical opinion that we should cancel or discourage festival and mass gatherings countywide that are drawing participants from other areas of the country and the world that have documented cases of person-to-person -person transmission. We have no documented cases of person-to-person -person transmission in the Austin-Travis County area at this time. That these festival mass gatherings, uh, if they have participants that will be in close and sustained physical contact with one another during the course of the festival, and that because of the nature of festivals themselves, mitigation measures that are available to other venues, like social distancing or um, controlled access to the event, simply aren't feasible. So that's what we're looking at. This is data-driven. It's health, uh, uh, health decision-driven. It is not a panic decision. This is an action being taken, so we will be prepared in any event. And I really appreciate all of our community pulling together and doing what our mom has taught us to do. Cover your cough, wash your hands, be a good neighbor, stay home when you're sick. And uh, if you are a venue that is not covered by a permit by the city or the county, uh, stay tuned so that we can provide you guidance as well so that we can all come together as a community and apply the same standards uh, of care for residents in the city um, in any one of our 21 other municipalities and also in the unincorporated areas of Travis County. Mayor? You know, the existence of this uh, virus is, uh, is, is, is really unfortunate, uh, but it's unfortunate for, for everybody and for the whole world. I mean, it's at times like this that you do really realize that, that all of us are, are in this in this together, uh, regardless of what city we're in or what state or what country or, or, or we're all in this together. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Stephanie Hayden. I want to thank uh, Dr. Escott. I want to thank the medical professionals with uh, Travis County. I especially want to thank the uh, independent advisory panel that had representatives or has representatives from all three of our major uh, health care system uh, in our city and some of our top physicians, um, uh, infectious uh, uh, disease doctors from Dell, Dell Medical School and everybody that served on that panel. Uh, I am proud that we are making decisions that are data driven and based on the evidence where the sole criteria being applied was the safety and health of our community. I want to thank the folks at South By and, and other venues for allowing this process to continue uh, as a scientific-based and health-related uh, decision-making uh, process. And I appreciate hearing from the folks in town that have come to me and said, whatever the decision is, just, just let us know. Let us know what we need to do, and we will, we will, we will participate. Uh, it's really unfortunate to be canceling South by Southwest. It's a really important event to our city. It's in a lot of ways tied to, to who we are in this city. And I really look forward to the, the, the next iteration of, uh, of, of South by uh, when, when, it, uh, when it comes back uh, again for us. Uh, as you've heard, uh, this uh, uh, advisory panel will continue to uh, uh, study and analyze uh, the uh, other uh, uh, unsanctioned uh, uh, events uh, that uh, would be otherwise happening in our city and making determinations as to what is uh, appropriate. As we said earlier this week, this is a evaluation that is ongoing daily uh, with decisions made daily best on, based on the best available information. That's what's happened today will continue to happen tomorrow and the next day. Uh, and then finally, I would conclude with what Dr. Escott said. Uh, 
there is no emergency uh, in our city today uh, other than uh, the, the exigency associated with needing to plan and be prepared. Uh, and that's what this city is doing now. And I'll conclude with the reminder that the advice to wash your hands for 20 seconds and to fist bump or bow uh, and to uh, not go to school or work if you're feeling sick is not something that's being recommended just so that it gives people something to do. It is, in fact, based on the data and the evidence, the most important thing we can be doing in this community right now to, to slow the, uh, the spread of, of, of this virus. All right, with that said, you have uh, everybody here uh, if there are uh, questions. Can you tell me what's the purpose for the, the disaster declaration? Does that have to do with, are you looking for funds or something from the state or, or, or national funds, or is it just like an administrative tool to make sure that the directive is followed? What's, what's the disaster declaration? For? I think the disaster declaration puts us in a position to be most prepared on every level. Uh, so it would be all of those things and, and more. Uh, it, it puts us in the best position uh, to, to be prepared for whatever it is uh, that we need to be doing. You've always said that you could only recommend that South by Southwest be canceled. Is this recommending or is this telling South by Southwest you're canceled? Well, with, with the declaration and with the order, we are telling South by that the event is canceled. And what has been their reaction to you? South by's reaction all along has been that they want to do anything and everything that the city and the county indicate is the uh, uh, best way to keep the community safe. And what do you think, though, the ramifications are big? I know health is the number one priority, but the financial, economic ramifications are huge for the city. What are your thoughts on that? That, that all ramifications are secondary to helping to ensure that we are safe as a community and we will deal with and work our way through uh, all of the other ramifications. But this decision at all times has been governed by the priority to keep the people that live here and visit here safe. And what safe. about the radio room coming on its heels? Well, with all events uh, that are coming up, the, uh, the medical uh, team uh, will be uh, establishing and applying criteria uh, as they did here. Uh, and, and that event, as with all events, there will be criteria issued, uh, as well as suggestions for, for, for mitigation efforts. Uh, uh, and uh, so that will continue. And what about the Associated with the disaster declaration, um, what is the purpose of the disaster declaration? So the order that's being issued doesn't establish in the order the criteria to be applied. Uh, it was the medical advice that based on the criteria that they have and, and the mitigation that would be necessary that, that this event, holding this event, was, was, was impossible, was incompatible with that. Uh, the work continues. It's going to be continuing on today uh, to, to identify the criteria or whatever are the next appropriate action with respect to uh, unsanctioned, uh, uh, and, and by unsanctioned we don't mean bad or evil, we just mean events that are not formally under the South by Southwest uh, umbrella. Uh, and, and that additional work will be announced as it, as it is produced and as is available. Sure. So I believe with the evolving situation across the United States, the identification of multiple cases in Harris County and around the Houston area, uh, as well as, you know, the fact that we're now testing individuals for the possibility of COVID-19, 
that that raises our level of concern to elevated. Uh, we don't have any confirmed cases. Uh, we did get a result back on the one that we initially sent. It was negative. We have additional ones that have been sent. Uh, we will not communicate every time we get a negative test. We'll tell you the first one's negative, but we will uh, communicate any time we have a positive result okay. and give you our usual information associated with those cases. Thank you, sir. Here, Thank you. When you uh, mentioned the evidence that uh, it's an active capacity to accelerate, can you clarify uh, what you meant and exactly what this panel of advisors were discussing when it came to the hard evidence that you were looking at? Sure. So there's literature on both sides regarding do mass gatherings impact the long-term number of people who get sick or die? And that answer is unclear. This is why you see CDC and DSHS has not issued specific information on what should go and what shouldn't. That's based on a threat assessment. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's important to remember that there is some evidence that because particularly in this circumstance, there's the potential of bringing people from areas where there is active transmission disease to our area that could seed the infection here and cause an outbreak sooner. Now, is that a concern in every circumstance? Not necessarily. Not in the cases where we have vaccines, we have medications which we can treat those. But in this circumstance, part of our national, our state, our local strategy is to delay this as long as possible because we don't know how soon we're going to identify a treatment. We know that a number of companies are working on vaccine development. And we also know that we have the, a normal decline in infectious diseases related to colds and flus that happen in the summer months. So we need to buy time. Our effort was to see if there were opportunities to mitigate that threat enough to go on. And the answer is there wasn't a path forward. Sure. And let, let me clarify something, uh, two things for a moment. When we talk about testing kits, those are the kits that the tests are actually run on. We have swabs, we have tubes, we have the ability to collect that information. We don't have a lab ourselves as the city of Austin or Travis County. We have a lab here, which it belongs to the state, and that's the, the state lab in, uh, here downtown. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Do we have somebody? That's something that's we'll, something we'll have to follow up with you. That's probably a legal definition. Okay, then, uh, secondly, is the fresh, or the knowing where the guests came from, is that what separates uh, South by Southwest from the rodeo, say, or another Austin urban music festival or anything, or the scale match play or anything else? Coming up? Sure. So the, the origin of the travelers was a key consideration, a key mm -hmm. concern. And that was one of the things that we couldn't mitigate or would have been very difficult to mitigate. One of the concerns that we had is that many of those individuals would have been placed under control orders or quarantine on their arrival to the city of Austin. Uh, our concern was there was a possibility that those individuals would intentionally violate that control order and come to the event, which is difficult for us to control. Uh, so that was a key consideration. If events are local events, like high school sporting events, or events at the University of Texas that use Texas residents only, or you know the vast majority are, it's a much different threat level. Yeah, over here. Did the city of Austin and or South by Southwest have insurance uh, that would cover the cancellation of an event such as this? I can't answer that. That may be a, another question for, for law. Yes, yes. Uh, one, one of the things that we found is, you know, we've had tests that have been sent to CDC that are still pending. And we have 
uh, uh, tests that have gone to the state lab that are getting processed more quickly. So we're hopeful now because obviously uh, with CDC being the only lab for quite some time, there's a backlog. Uh, we're expecting that we'll get a much quicker turnaround now that the lab is open here in Austin. One more question. One more question. Uh, Doctor, very quickly, uh, do you, yeah, I know you changed it because I see two tickets on the approach that have been taken. Do you need to see the profile of the elderly, of the men? No. Uh, again, I, I won't provide any information at all on individuals being tested. When we have confirmed cases, which we expect at some stage we will, okay. then we'll provide our general information, decade of age, uh, okay. and. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about number of tests number of tests pending. Okay, Austin, last question. Uh, Mayor, you talked a little bit about the economic impact. Can you talk generally about things the city can do to help businesses or workers who uh, suffer a loss due to cancellation and stuff like that there? I think that part of any kind of, of, of event like this uh, requires the city to be resilient. Uh, and I think that the resilient plans, uh, uh, obviously the city has some programs and social net programs to help with resi resiliency in the community. And I know it's something that we'll continue to, to, to look at. Uh, uh, the first time we've been in this situation, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll learn as we move forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have follow-on questions, uh, we'll get you some information here shortly uh, if we can have some questions here. Okay, thank you.